the release date of Smash Ultimate dwindles ever so close, and it's got me fucking hype, man. Every time I hear the word Smash, my eyes just light up like the inkling in the reveal trailer. They just go... Oops, wrong one. Let me try that again. Fuck. Hang on, I got it, I got it. Ah, there we go. For more than half a year, Nintendo has just been tickling our balls, teasing us with all the old characters, lots of new characters, a fucking houseplant. I never thought I'd be excited for a Venus flytrap in my entire life, but here I am. And they topped it all off with the new story mode, The World of Light. And this trailer looked anime as hell. And that got me thinking, would Super Smash Bros. Ultimate work as an anime? And honestly, the idea has a lot more going for it than I originally thought. So, let's take a look. Now, Smash Ultimate is a fighting game, or a party platformer depending on who you ask while fucking Smash Bros gets two fucking tournaments every fucking year when it's not even a fucking fighting- So obviously, if Smash Ultimate is going to be an anime, one of the biggest draws has to be the action sequences. And Nintendo has shown us time and time again they can construct beautifully animated and well choreographed fight sequences, all while using CGI technology to animate it. And while most anime scenes with CGI in it are just- I think that if Smash Ultimate was to be turned into an anime, that it should only use CGI, because it just looks so good when Nintendo does it, and it fits the style of the game way more than if they was hand-drawn animation. It would be like the Berserk anime, but, you know, without having to look like the Berserk anime. Jesus Christ, who fucking greenlit this? Anyways, action is a huge part of Smash Brothers, so its design will draw heavy inspiration from Shonen Battle series. Like your boards, your food porns, your base liquids, your green Naruto's, your one Reese's PCs, your small men's inside your large men's, your animal slave fighters, your card fighters, your top fighters, your magnet ball fighters, your battle ball launcher fighters. Man, there's a lot of these. Does anyone even remember this one? Each episode would be focused on fighting a villain of the week, probably a captured hero or a boss or something, and Smash as a series would lend itself to make each of those fights more complex and creative. There are so many Nintendo IPs, each with their own gameplay mechanics and unique features, that each episode could focus on that world, how certain characters interact with it, and having a challenge added to the battle that reflects the gameplay of the world, while seeing how certain characters would complete the challenge. Like, imagine a Fire Emblem episode using grid-based combat. A powerful Ike clone shows up, commanding a giant army of soldiers, and in order to keep themselves from being overwhelmed, Olimar just plucks an entire army of unpaid interns to be used as soldiers and weapons. Or they're in Villager's town and they have to earn enough money to give to Tom Nook to fight the boss of the area, so you just see Captain Falcon and Pac-Man out in the yard doing menial labor. It'd be hilarious. There's so much creativity coming from Nintendo's games that they could develop well thought out and engaging battles. Like stand battles from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Donkey Kong is basically already a JoJo for fuck's sake. It just makes sense. By the way, Joseph is cranky Kong cause they're old, Jolene is Dixie Kong cause they're both blonde girls, Josuke is Kitty Kong cause he's a giant fucking baby, and of course Giorno is Diddy Kong with his stand golden banana experience. <laughs> Now that we know the genre, let's talk about the story. Which is gonna be real simple, it's just gonna be an adaptation of the World of Light story mode. And while we don't know specifics about the story, unless you're one of those scumfuck bastards who pirated the game early, there's enough general ideas that we can infer from the trailers. The final Smash Direct trailer shows us that the story will star Kirby, the one true Nintendo character. All hail Kirby. We'll adventure through the different Nintendo world, finding a myriad of clone fighters in a variety of forms thanks to the spirits. Kirby will defeat them and rescue his friends, restore the world, and defeat the final boss whose name has been revealed as Gollum in the overview trailer. It's pretty simple, but I don't think most people are trying to watch an anime based off Smash Brothers for the in-depth plot. Like, think of Kingdom Hearts. That's a crossover series with such a convoluted, over-the-top, disgusting storyline that Square Enix had to hire video game donkey to make a video explaining the plot. A Smash anime? Nah, we wouldn't need to be that complicated. But unfortunately, even with such a simple plot, there's still a couple of problems. Like how they don't talk. About half the cast just doesn't speak, they just bombard us with a chorus of sound effects. And no matter how simple a plot is, it's kinda hard to convey anything when they don't talk. Now, of course, there are a couple workarounds to this. We could get a narrator to help guide our heroes along the way. Or, what I think would be a more fun option is to have them pantomime. We've seen this kind of thing before. The Mario & Luigi RPG series, the Super Mario RPG, a uh, third example that isn't Mario. I just think letting their actions be their words is a much more creative and fun solution and definitely speaks in Nintendo. Or we just give them all voices. <laughs> 
for a monster and I wind up with a whip. I do spend my cash for this new fangled online monster. Now the biggest problem I see is there's too many characters. There are so many playable characters in the new Smash. Except Waluigi and Shadow Bomber the Hedgehog and Isaac and Wolverine Shadow the Hedgehog and, and Wolverine and Grandma. And a lot of them are the stars of their own series. How do we make a story with so many main characters? This is the exact same problem that Avengers Infinity War had. So, let's use their solution. Let's split up the party into six to eight groups. Maybe Kirby finds the original eight characters from the N64 game and they all split up and start up their own parties as they explore each part of the world to help restore everything quicker. Then we spend each episode with a different party, cycling through until each party's had about six to eight episodes of their own, giving everyone enough time to have their own moments. This will make the series about 48 episodes-ish, plus the time it takes to start up the story and end it with the big final conclusion, so it'll be around 52 episodes. I think that's a pretty fair number to have. And we know Nintendo has the cash money to animate a series for that long. Not only with the sales of the game, but also with the other external projects they're working on. The Mario movie coming out eventually, the Detective Pikachu movie. They got cash money to burn. Even then, that's still a lot of characters to work through to give their own special moments so that no one feels shorted about their favorite character getting screen time. But I think it's just gonna happen here and there. It's the nature of having such a large cast. And I don't think we should really make more episodes than 52, because It'll just turn into a lot at that point. But that does lead me into possibly the most important part about making this anime, the characters. Characters are the mean potatoes of crossover media, and most of that joy comes from their interactions. Some of the best parts of the Subspace Emissary was just watching our favorite characters interact with each other. Like think back to Diddy Kong dragging Fox and Falco to go save DK, Mennonite and Lucario's clash of power on top of the mountains and understanding respect for each other, King Dedede being the coolest, nicest, dope-ass ruler ever in Nintendo history. Yeah, fuck you, Peach and Zelda. King Dedede. Tip at the top of the tier list. Make that tier list. Even Pitt and Palutena's conversations in Smash 4 where they just reference the character. It does something in our brains that just flips a switch and makes us feel good because we know the reference and it's our characters that they're talking about. They should split up each episode into two parts. One for the action and unique combat scenarios, and the other for slice of life anime goodness. All the girls fawning over Kirby and the Pokemon, the prideful Incineroar vs DK, Bayonetta doing anime things to Mama's boy Lucas. They would just do that kind of thing for more than half of each episode and just express the endearing qualities of all the characters that we love. It would just be a fun ride with some sad theming behind it. While writing the script for this video, brainstorming and just thinking about Smash in general, I kept coming to the conclusion that the theming for the anime, and for the game itself, implies that this will be the last Smash game. The signs are all there. Of course there's Sakurai's exhaustion billowing out into all of the Nintendo Directs, but there's more than just that. It's in the game's name. This is Smash Ultimate. The Ultimate Edition. The most grandiose version. They are doing their best to bring literally everyone here in some way, shape, or form. They are making it so there is literally nothing else to put in. The final edition, if you will. What started the series was a simple game that was supposed to bring forth that idea of playing with your toys, slamming them together, and letting your imagination craft each battle, see which of them is the strongest. Through each version, the cast has grown, you found more and more toys to play with, and now, finally, there are so many toys that we barely know what to do with them. And yes, some toys don't have the bionic grip or changeable outfits, but all your favorite toys are there in one way or another. But now, after almost 20 years, we've had our fun. We've watched our toys do battle for God knows how many hours. And now, in this final hurrah to bring all the toys together, we give them one final adventure, as friends. Not something serious, something a little more lighthearted and fun. It's even hinted at by Sakurai. The goal of the adventure mode is for everyone to return to their own worlds. It's time for your toys to stop fighting. Let them rest. Return home. Thank you guys for listening. It means a lot. It really does. So let me know what you guys thought about it by leaving a comment down below. And if you think it's actually good enough, share it with your friends. Your video game friends, your Smash friends, just whoever. If you think it was good content, let them know. 
I'm probably going to do more Smash Ultimate videos when the game comes out, so make sure to subscribe to be up to date when they come out. Or follow me on social media and talk to me. You know, I get bored in here. I'm just stuck in a fucking closet recording all the time trying to make videos. So talk to me. I need, some, I need a distraction so I don't go crazy. Alright, that's all I have to say. Hope to see you guys next time. Peace out.